Welcome in, along with Bruce Gratkowski, I'm Steve Palazzolo. Today discussing the quarterbacks, all of the quarterbacks who got drafted in their fits with their new teams. Bruce, let's start at the top. Kyler Murray going to the Arizona Cardinals. Cliff Kingsbury system. They got a couple weapons for him in the draft, too. How do you see this whole fit working out? I'm excited. I'm excited for the Arizona fan base. Kingsbury getting his guy. I mean, he, he's had a love affair with him since high school. So finally, it's a match made in heaven. They get to come together with this offensive scheme. And look, not only with Kyler Murray, but the rest of the draft. You know, Andy Isabella, slot receiver, speed that he can use. Don't forget, Wes Welker played for Kingsbury in college. So that's the type of guy I'm looking at there. So a lot of things Arizona's doing right, and it starts with the quarterback. So I'm super excited to see that pick up. I want to see what Kingsbury does from a schematic standpoint, personnel standpoint. Are they going right. to legitimately use 10 personnel, meaning four wide receivers and a running back? How much tight end are they going to use? Um, is it going to be a true old-school air raid system entering the NFL? Because to this point, it's just been concepts, not the entire system, so to speak. Well, and I think like you and I talked about, I mean, this is really impactful for the future of the NFL. If Kyler Murray comes in and balls out, now we're looking at athletic quarterbacks that can really throw the football that are under six foot. Yeah. Now, I mean, Russell Wilson started it to give Kyler Murray this chance. But now if Kyler Murray takes a hold of this in Kingsbury with his collegiate type offense, if them two, if they come together with this thing and they're successful, watch how this league goes, man. We're going to start getting away from those 6'4", six, 6'5", six, type quarterbacks and trying to find the next Kyler Murray. Get the guy that can get the job done as a passer and as a rusher. How about at number six? You got Daniel Jones going to the New York Giants. Of course, everybody's criticizing the pick, but he's in New York now, and the question's going to be about the fit, playing for head coach Pat Shermer, being the next guy behind Eli Manning. How's this marriage going to work for Daniel Jones? You know, a lot of people disagreed with the pick at number six. It, maybe he wasn't worth it, it that high in the draft, but if that's their guy, that's their guy. You got to go, go all in. If that's what you're feeling and you think the franchise is going to ride with Daniel Jones, I don't care where you pick him at, if it's six or 17, if he's successful or not, it's not going to matter which one you got him at. So I don't mind the pick because I see some things on film. I like the way he stands in the pocket. He's a tough kid. The thing I'm excited for him is to learn from Eli Manning, not only on the football field, but in the locker room. Eli Manning, his teammates love him. He's a good team player. He's been a veteran around the league for a long time. He's been successful. He's won Super Bowls. Daniel Jones can learn a lot, and he can sit behind him for a year or two and continue to learn, and I think that'll best suit Daniel Jones. Yeah, it seems like that is the plan right now, Eli Manning being the guy right now. We'll see how quickly Daniel Jones can push him. And, and, and you know, and I think people get mad about it be, being the number six pick because he's not your Carson Wentz where he's going to win a game with his arm. So Daniel Jones, it's important for him to meet, to beat teams mentally, you know, and being that leader, you know, really like a Peyton Manning style and Eli Manning. You have to be smart and just orchestrate and be a general of the offense. And that's where he has to get to. So when you talk about a six overall pick, you're thinking guys with, you know, Ben Roethlisberger talent, or Carson Wentz talent. So I think that's why some people are disappointed in that pick. How important is sitting for a year? This is kind of the eternal debate. Uh, we know Kyler Murray is going to start, but as far as Daniel Jones and the other quarterbacks we're going to talk about, Drew Locke, Dwayne Haskins, they're likely going to at least sit for a little bit. How valuable is that experience? I, th I think it's invaluable. I mean, I blame it on Chris Sims. I had to start 11 games as a rookie, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, that's when he ruptured his spleen. So, uh, you know, what a tough guy. But I was, I was able to learn from him during training camp, but if I could have had a whole season to sit and learn how the NFL game works – and just kind of ha how to handle different situations, um, that would have helped tremendously. So I think of like a Drew Locke, Daniel Jones, these guys that could sit for a year. Even Haskins in Washington, I think will have the ability to learn a little bit. But in Washington, he's going to open some eyes, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's a day one starter. Let's get into Haskins a little bit more. He's going to go to Washington, uh, compete with Case Keenum, who you know right now would probably be penciled in as the starter. Jay Gruden system, you played in it. What what can Haskins do? What can he add to that system? How are they going to use his skill set? Well, look, I was a fan of Haskins. I think he's a big, strong, physical guy. He has the arm strength, short and intermediate, and the accuracy. The thing I worried about Haskins is sometimes his deep ball tends to die on him. Right. Well, in a John, a John Gruden offense, Jay Gruden offense, he has enough arm strength to make all the throws they're going to ask of him. The deep balls, he can make those throws. He's going to have the chip on his shoulder as well 
seeing Daniel Jones in that division with the Giants facing each other twice a year, that's going to be exciting. But I think Haskins is going to go into Washington during training camp, OTAs, and really impressed with his arm strength, his accuracy, and his mental knowledge of the game. And with Jay Gruden, he's going to give you a bunch of opportunities to make calls at the line of scrimmage. So that will depend how fast Haskins can pick that up. It's how fast he'll be able to play on a football field. And then we get into the second round. we got Drew Locke going to the Denver Broncos. A lot of rumors that he was going to go at number 10 overall to Denver. But I like it. At 42 overall, certainly worth with the arm talent that Drew Locke has taking a shot there. And a new offense coming to Denver. How does he fit in with the Shanahan type of scheme going to the Broncos? Back well, to Denver, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that whole scenario, that's why I'm wearing orange today for the Broncos. <laughs> but that whole scenario with the Steelers trading up, the Broncos getting good value and moving back. I was happy for the Steelers. They got their linebacker they, that they need, the quarterback of their defense. And the Broncos got value in their pick, and they still got a, their quarterback. Right. And for Locke, that's, this is a perfect offensive system for him to go to because Riss Gangarello, the new offense coordinator in Denver, Denver, he was with me while I was playing for the Raiders. He's a quality control coach. From there on, he, he learned from Kyle Shanahan. So he has a Kyle Shanahan offense. He's going to teach Drew Locke how the quarterback position is supposed to be played. Footwork, timing, managing the huddle, managing the offense, making decisions with your brain and your arm as well. So I'm excited to see what they do with him. And most importantly, he gets to learn from Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco has been through it. He's won a Super Bowl. He's handled the ups and downs better than a lot of veterans I've seen. So he can learn a lot from Joe Flacco and now mature a few years and then get ready to play. Yeah, with Locke, a lot of the things you mentioned that he's going to get a chance to work on are things that he needed to work on, the footwork right. and the mechanics in the pocket, uh, some of the mental games. So when you talk about fit, that could be a really nice one, especially with a little uh, less pressure being in the second round. Uh, beyond that, all those three guys, I think, or four guys, have expectations to start down the road. Beyond that, Will Greer going to the Carolina Panthers, Ryan Finley to the Cincinnati Bengals, Jarrett Stidham to the New England Patriots, all guys more in a backup role, uh, even for the for foreseeable future. Any anybody there that just fits really well in your mind? You know, I mean, for Jared Stidham to go to the Patriots, any quarterback getting to go to, to, to learn behind Tom Brady and Josh McDaniels, they're going to have a leg up. So he, he's a very good quarterback. He could throw the football well. He does, yeah. So, you know, so that system's going to help him out and really elevate his game. So he's in a good situation. I think Finley and Cincinnati – getting to sit behind Andy Doan and actually compete a little bit, push him. I saw a lot of poise out of Finley, and I think he has the footwork and timing already. He's a guy that can operate a system pretty quick, and with Zach Taylor's new system. And Will Greer, you know, that North Turner, Turner offense, I'm anxious to see how this works out. I think they can afford to, I don't want to say waste a pick, but take a chance on a guy. You have Cam Newton, so Will Greer can sit back, try to develop, but those big shots – those 18 to 20-yard in routes or comebacks, bench routes, 18 to 20-yard uh, out routes, those are the throws I'm anxious to see Will Greer make. Um, if he has the arm strength and capability, if he does, he could be a successful quarterback. Yeah, we've seen Norv adjust his system a little bit because he used right. to love those vertical stems a lot more. He gave Cam a few more easy throws last year. Uh, I did mention Ryan Finley as an Andy Dalton style quarterback, and yeah. I think with that new system that you know running more boot action and things like that, Finley was really good at that at NC State. And then with Stidham, we saw Jimmy Garoppolo in the New England system kind of speed up his process a little bit because right. he's coming from such a, a Baylorish type of offense in college where you didn't have to make any reads. So he had a slow transition in the NFL, but it got better. That's where Stidham started his career, well, and, at Baylor. Yeah, and that's what I see from Stidham. A lot, you know, at Auburn, he was a little late. Just you know, slow. Everything was really slow to process, right? Yes, he needs to speed that up. So McDaniels, seeing Tom Brady operate, he's going to speed it up. Because his deep balls, you can't wait in the NFL, especially until a guy gets open. You have to anticipate. So I think for Stidham, especially how Josh McDaniels calls plays, and orchestrates a certain package and game plans is going to help him tremendously. Manipulate his mind a little bit, oh. get him moving quicker. I like it. So there you have it. It's all your fits for the new quarterbacks. You guys all win. All your teams win. You got the best quarterback for your system.